afternoon, Howard Wig, Think Tech Hawaii, Code Green. Welcome to another beautiful Hawaiian winter day. Background, we work for the Hawaii State Energy Office, and Hawaii was the leading state in declaring the goal of 100% clean energy by the year 2045. Many states have since emulated us, and we're on track so far but we've gone through the low-hanging fruit. Now we need to get really, really serious about following the latest in energy-efficient technology in order to achieve that goal. And of all the citizens in the state of Hawaii, possibly the person in the lead of the lead of pioneering high-efficiency technology and bringing it to the fore, not just for Hawaii, but for the entire world, is Mr. Nick Dizon, president of Dizon Energy. Welcome again, Nick. Been a Hi, long Howard. Time since we've seen you because you have spent more time in the UAE and the Philippines than you have in Hawaii. I was concerned about your family, but you're your wife is attending grandchildren, so that, that works out to an equitably, equitable family situation. So you have been, since last we met, up to some very exciting pilot programs in the UAE and the Philippines. So take it away, Nick, and wow, describe what is breakthroughing here. Yeah, well, uh, you know, the policies of Hawaii, uh, with the objective of that it's now law about uh, clean energy or 100% renewable by 2045. Other countries have taken an even more aggressive stance. Mm -hmm. So in the Philippines, for example, uh, before COVID, they passed the law for energy efficiency. And it required a 30% reduction in draw or for large power users, or you face penalties. Because of COVID, that was delayed by a year or two. But starting today, or January 1, in the Philippines, um, large power users um, who have been forced to, require, uh, forced to report their energy usage are now having to have to meet that 30% energy efficiency reduction target, or they face penalties. So um, that's in action in the Philippines right now. Uh, with day one being January 1. The United Arab Emirates, along with the other oil producing uh, countries there, Saudi Arabia, Bar uh, Bahrain, Qatar, Kuwait, they've also adopted very stringent energy efficiency laws and regulations, which go into effect also uh, from now. Um, these are driving um, customers to find energy efficient solutions. And to reduce your, uh, your energy load by 30%, there's only one place to look, that's at heating and cooling. And the only solution that meets that and is advertised for meeting that target, at least in relations to heating and cooling, is SunTrack. Uh, so as you know, on previous episodes of Think Tech, I've presented SunTrack and how it works and all that good stuff. Um, I also presented how Carrier Hawaii has uh, validated that SunTrack works, and they've endorsed it to the point where we co-market SunTrack and Carrier equipment together. And we've actually seen where customers in Hawaii, commercial customers in Hawaii, uh, have seen an over 60% reduction of energy draw by the air conditioner that the SunTrack's hooked up to, be it a four or five ton split or a 30 or 40 ton commercial split or a 30 or 45 ton air, air cool or, you know, air cooled chiller. We'll be doing our first 150 ton chillers, several of them this year, uh, all in Hawaii. <clears throat> we're looking to do, we're already doing a uh, uh, variable refrigerant flow over in India with SunTrack, over in the Philippines with SunTrack. Uh, we'll be starting that uh, on splits and variable refrigerant flow in Israel 
and uh, throughout the uh, the Gulf countries and the Gulf uh, in the Middle East. So by the end of this year, uh, we'll actually have a greater pace of installation of SunTrack overseas than we will in the United States. Um, that's also because two major fast food chains, I don't want to say their names, but they're very, very well known, mm -hmm. uh, have committed to switching all their air conditioning to SunTrack in the Philippines. That's over 17,000 panels that'll be going in to the Metro Manila area on just those two fast food chains. And that's going to be the equivalent of several replacing several coal fired power generating plants. That's how powerful SunTrack is. All without, you know, so our, we're reducing the carbon footprint, we're, we're reducing the amount of coal or fo any fossil fuel, natural gas that needs to be burned. Um, and because we work 24 hours a day, um, that actually enables wind, uh, solar in particular to be most effective during the day towards uh, further reducing energy draw from commercial air conditioning uh, in the Philippines, the U.S., and mi the Middle East. So that is underway at this time. So the big breakthrough is SunTrack is becoming um, pretty much accepted worldwide for it's that it actually works. The technology works. Um, another thing that uh, happens on the sustainability side of SunTrack is not only do we increase the life of the compressor by an order of magnitude of more, we've also addressed a problem that we didn't know, we, we, didn't under, we didn't appreciate how bad this problem was, and that's corrosion on condenser coils. All right, here in Hawaii, it's well known, salt air, will destroy condenser coils. I mean, some of the biggest reasons why we were able to put um, SunTrack on commercial installations here in Hawaii was the salt air was causing the condenser coils to leak so badly that it only made sense to replace the entire unit, all right? Well, come lo and behold, it's worse in the Philippines because they don't have uh, the EPA's Clean Air Act. They don't have the Clean Air Act. They have um, acid rain. And acid rain uh, is from all the soot, from all the cars that don't have catalytic converters, all the diesel, you know, they, they don't have uh, filters over there uh, or scrubbers. So all that black soot collects, gets sucked by the fans onto the condensers. And when it rains, the fan sucks the water on there, turns that uh, soot into solution and the acid will destroy the condenser in less than two years. So leaking condensers, across the Philippines is, is, a, is a fairly common problem. So, so, so what, do, what does SunTrack do to prevent this uh, corrosion, Nick? Yeah, so um, there, earlier you, were, uh, you had the uh, background, uh, you had the, the video of uh, or the website, the Need on Clean Energy website, and it shows the headquarters for the Philippine Department of Energy in downtown Manila. Well, there's a, that sun track there is mounted to a four-ton daikin, all right? That daikin has been running for about two years at around one and a half to two amps year-round, which is unbelievably low. It's supposed to run anywhere from 12 to 15 amps, and we have it running at under two amps. But just as importantly, apparently, is the fan on the condenser never turns on. In fact, the uh, they had two teams, uh, engineering and science teams, from the Department of Energy Philippines test the system. And both teams said that they never ever saw the fan coil fan for the, you know, for the condenser go on. If that fan never turns on, it's because the refrigerant coming from the compressor has uh, changed state from gas to liquid and is already at about ambient temperature. Therefore, there's no heat rejection or you know dissipation that needs to occur at the condenser. The sun track has done all that on its own. So the fan never pulls the soot in. So the condenser coil, um, if you see pictures of it, two years later, 
it's pristine. You can run your finger across it and no black soot comes out of your hand. Um, so at, uh, at the military bases here in Hawaii, uh, when they found out that uh, the condenser coils uh, at Joint Base or Marine Corps Base, which rot out usually when, within two to three years, that this won't happen because the salt air won't be pulled in because the fans don't turn on. Um, that's got uh, military, commercial, uh, facility people across the state of Hawaii uh, pretty excited about this, which is why we're, we'll be doing our first 150-ton air-cooled chillers this year. Uh, we expect to have at least one or two major projects a month throughout this year, and that may double or triple in 2024. I expect by third quarter 2023 that we'll we'll see that number double and it's going to start increasing to the limit at which we have crews able to install mm. and that so that's happening in hawaii that's going to be happening across the western u.s especially in california um we're we're starting with great guns all obviously in the philippines and right now it's winter in the United Arab Emirates, it's actually down in like the upper 60s, lower 70s there. Mm. So they're kind of on hold. Uh, things will start heating up rapidly yes. in March, right? When we installed the first sun track in the United Arab Emirates, uh, it was 105 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, 80% humidity on a brand new carrier four-ton split. That four-ton split was running at around two and a half to three amps at 105 degrees Fahrenheit, 80% humidity. That's crazy good. Mm -hmm. And what what is the normal amperage under those conditions? Oh yeah, that four tons is gonna be running full bore, mm -hmm. full on. And um, earlier in the summer, we, we didn't have it up running when it was 115 degrees Fahrenheit, all right? Mm -hmm. So we probably would have seen maybe another amp or so on top of that uh, four-ton carrier. But, you know, uh, Carrier and Daikin, I would have to say, make the most efficient machines in the world, air condition efficient air conditioning machines. Of course, uh, Hyundai, LG, Samsung, Train, others are, you know, they're up there. But we've installed on their gear, and I'm, I personally and my team have seen the best results with carrier and Daikin equipment. It works on Panasonic, Mitsubishi, Train, Ream, um, Goodman. Uh, it works on everything. But it looks like the algorithms and the machine learning in the uh, carrier and Daikin equipment um, are maybe a cut above everybody else. I'm sure everybody else is trying to catch up. But... Um, the firmware, software, sensor controls in Daikin and uh, Care uh, makes a lot of the other offerings of uh, software to add on to make those more efficient. I really don't see the um, a, a good business model where there's a re, you know a good return on investment on those software. Um, SunTrack with Care and SunTrack is absolutely the best. Uh, when you're able to drill a four-ton unit down to two and a half to three amps on 105 degree Fahrenheit, 80% humidity, there's no add-on software. There's no other piece of equipment out there that can get remotely near that. And what what is the normal amperage draw for for a four-ton unit? Yeah, uh, on 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 like a LG or uh, other brands, it's probably going to be between 13 and 15 amps. The carrier Daikin might get as low as 11 to 13 amps, a little bit lower. But you throw a, a sun track on the carrier or the Daikin or the Mitsubishi or the Fujitsu, uh, you're going to really drill it down. But I'm ex I've seen a 1 to 2 plus amp uh, drop advantage with uh, carrier and Daikin in particular. That uh, Philippine unit... Um, Dyke, I flew into the Philippines last year, April 26, 2022. Um, while I was approaching the airport, Daikin had sent a team to the Philippine Department of Energy to analyze that machine themselves. And 
the engineers were flabbergasted. They were like, this is unbelievable that this unit is running so well. In fact, uh, to make sure it was working, they went into the, the space that was cooled and they changed the thermostat. It was at like 24C, 23C, and they lowered it to 16. All right, that's like uh, upper, upper, middle, upper 60s Fahrenheit. And so when they did that, the compressor went full blast. The fan started to turn uh, because there was no way it was going to bring the space down to that that set point, right? Um, so they, they they verified, oh, the machine works properly, right? So they they put it back to uh, 23, 24C, and the fan promptly shut off. And the girls in the room were getting frozen to death when they when they set it to 16, 17C. So it took a while to uh, to stabilize back to the temperature to to a comfortable temperature, yeah. but uh, yeah. So we had three teams check out that project on the Philippines, and um, we even did a presentation to uh, Moralco and Emser. Moralco is the largest utility in the Philippines, and they are under pressure right now because there's there's a uh, no spinning, almost no spinning reserve left for all of Metro Manila. And during the summer, they go into yellow and red alerts where rolling blackouts have to occur because the ACs are all pumping and they don't have reserve. Uh, they've made the commitment not to build any more coal-fired power plants, uh, but it's expensive to add more LNG and there's resistance to putting more LNG. So they're trying to add more wind and solar, uh, but approvals for that size of wind and solar take time. And even those that are approved are not going to make up the difference, especially in the early morning, late afternoon, evening, when the heat is at its highest and it's sustained, and yet solar energy is dropping off, like dropping off a cliff. Mm -hmm. So really the answer to that issue the affordable, immediate answer is SunTrack. In fact, worldwide, uh, be it the duck curve in uh, California or Texas or Hawaii or anywhere in the Sun Belt where there's extensive solar and wind, SunTrack is the only solution that can address that immediately. Now, uh, Nick, you, you mentioned uh, Daikin several times and we see that unique looking panel. Please uh, refresh us as to what role, very important role, that the Daikin uh, unit contributes. Okay. Yeah, so Daikin, you know, they're the, they're the largest air conditioning OEM in the world. Uh, they, they're, in a, they're in a battle for first place all the time with Carrier, all right? And uh, Daikin also bought McQuay. I think you remember the McQuay brand. That's also, so Goodman Amana, American brands, Dyke, uh, McQuay, all bought by Daikin. And the third largest factory in the United States is a Daikin factory over in Houston, Texas. It's only a few years old. They make 400,000 air conditioners a month. I mean, wrap your mind around that. For the U.S. Uh, market, 400,000 Daikin, amount of Goodman Daikins are made a month. And they sell out. I've been in that factory took a, uh, a tour, and then I had a meeting with a senior executive there for about two hours. So Daikin also believes that the SunTrack product works, all right? Mm -hmm. The difference, though, is um, while they agree that SunTrack works, they haven't validated it to not voiding their warranty to the degree that Carrier has, all right? Mm -hmm. So the, the other largest... Um, exclusive distributor of carrier in the world is in the Western United States called Sigler. Sigler is beginning from today uh, across their Western US network. They will be marketing SunTrack uh, along with carrier equipment across the Western US. That was all initiated by us guys in Hawaii. We set that all up. We set the carrier ball rolling with Carrier Hawaii Thankfully, um, Carrier Hawaii has uh, uh, 
the owner of Terry Hawaii, longtime Hawaii guy, John Arizumi. Mm-hmm. He is a strong pro Hawaii pro carrier advocate. When he saw for himself that SunTrack works back in 2018, he he personally stuck his neck out with Carrier Corporate and said, Carrier Hawaii is going to work with SunTrack so that as long as a SunTrack certified installer puts it on carrier equipment, it will not void the carrier warranty on brand new variable refrigerant flow splits, commercial splits, um, air-cooled chillers. That's unheard of. Yeah. Daikin knows this, and they are aware of this, but uh, Daikin being a Japanese company run out of o- Osaka, uh, it's going to have to be an executive consensus decision out of Osaka that makes that happen. In the meantime, they're watching uh, Carrier get installed with SunTrack, and frankly, the projects that we've been doing um, – Brands other than Carrier are not even invited to propose right now. We are the only equipment spec is Carrier SunTrack. Wow. And uh, remind us, Nick, what uh, SunTrack does, because that, that's I think that I regard that as the secret sauce that brings your amperage down by a factor of seven or so. Yes, yes. So SunTrack is a device that's a solar thermal collector heat collector that goes between the compressor there on the far left and the uh, condenser on the far right so you can see the sun track panel uh, inserted in the circuit in between it essentially does the job of both the compressor and the condenser so you'll actually see uh, the hot gases coming out of the compressor going into the sun track and changing state to a liquid. So the sun track increases the, the pressure on the gas to such an extent that around halfway uh, as it flows through the sun track panel, it changes state from gas to liquid. And when it changes to liquid, it dumps heat at a rapid rate. So on a commercial, on that 30 ton chiller, we saw the the exit temperature from the sun track being around 131 degrees Fahrenheit, the entry, and this is in the height of summer here in Hawaii, where we're in the low 90s. The entry temperature of the refri- liquid, now the liquid refrigerant as it entered the condenser was 91 degrees. So we saw a, a near 40 degree drop in temperature in around 15 feet of pipe. Um, our, our MEPE was flabbergasted. We, he measured that again and again and again, but the temperature drop was further verified by the fact that the uh, thermal controlled fans on the condenser didn't turn on. There was nothing, they didn't need to pull air through there to cool anything because as soon as that 91 degree ambient liquid hit the condenser fins, Whatever heat it had left to dump, it dumped instantly. And on a 30-ton chiller, the size of the condenser coil, it, it's like a wall, right? It's, a, it's a, like a U-shaped wall. It's pretty big. And that you can put your hand on it, and the entire surface is cool, cooler than ambient. And the other thing is it's, near, it's right next to the water. It's in Honolulu Harbor. The... Anti-corrosion coating, which is this green coating that they spray on, um, normally within a year or two, it's gone. It's pristine. That green coating is as good as it was uh, in the first month of installation. So uh, that condenser coil, it's now been there since uh, twenty late 2018, early 2019. Uh, we're talking at least three years of nothing degrading that condenser coil, the coating. And uh, this is why carrier engineers, uh, they swear by it now. In Hawaii, carrier engineers are working side by side with us to sell SunTrack. And Nick, we've just got a few minutes left. I see the rapid, rapid expansion of this technology in Hawaii. 
which is going to help not just with our amperage, but I think this carries through to a, the peak evening hours also. Yes, yeah. it's the best answer for the evening peak. All right. So as solar drops off, uh, the sun track, which is working through the day, will work through the night. All right. Um, uh, if, later on, if you have a chance, Howard, you can look at the E gauges and you'll see uh, that as the as night comes, there is not a surge in amp draw. All right. In fact, it stays low through the night. Um, it'll rise again during the day because of the heat of the day. It will rise a bit. But um, the range of change is very small. We also reduce demand charge. Right. So. Mm -hmm. There's no motor inrush current, no lock rotor spikes, none of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, we really, we save money on the demand charge side as well as the KW hour side. I know there's only a minute or two left. Um, if you could put that last website up, the I'm actually going to be pivoting my personal time away from SunTrack by end of first quarter of 2023 to focus on what you see there, which is uh, sky sales and need on wind power. I didn't want to create any new companies, but I did in this case because it was impossible to ignore. Um, this is a far superior way to get renewable energy at a low cost, at a low footprint. Um, you, you, they are coming out with a one megawatt kite. So instead of one megawatt of solar panels or a wind turbine you get this kite flying in the air and this kite is considered firm energy like a generator howard 24 hours a day except for a 10 second re flight return time this thing is giving a megawatt all all day uh, we'll put a, enough of a battery system in so that during that 10 second flyback there's no reduction of output to the grid. And if we have three or four of these flying in, uh, with uh, synchronization, um, we'll have four megawatts to the grid, 24 hours a day, firm power for a fraction of the cost of wind turbines or solar farms. And of course, we have a 24 hour production time on these. So this company has been around for around 10 years. All right. They started out uh, making a, a, a device to help reduce uh, fuel burn on ships, and then they converted it to generating electricity. So most of 2023, I'll be focusing on that, and I hope to bring a pilot system to the Big Island by third quarter of this year. Wow. And on that very, very positive note nick we must bid pond adieu but i'm making a note contact <laughs> nick design in september and see what in the heck is going on and maybe we can we have a if you're up and piloting we can have a whole new show on that so on that very cheery note thank you so much nick design and from howard wig code green think tech hawaii see you next time Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.